Hey there. This is video number three in our series on redox and electrochemistry. We're going to build upon our assigning of oxidation state skills with this new topic right here. We're going to learn today how to write half reactions. What I mean by a half reaction is that it's only half of an equation. It focuses on one element and then it watches what happens to that element through the reaction. And so we're going to get very specific about what's happening to electrons. And in fact, we're even going to include the electrons in this half reaction. This is to help us see how the electrons are moving, but it also helps us to balance for charge. We need to make sure that the number of electrons on the left or the beginning of your reaction is the same as the number of electrons on the right. All right, so let's start with our sample equation here. I have two silver ions with a one positive charge. To that, I am adding some copper in the solid state. Through the reaction, we end up with some copper ions that are dissolved in water, and they each have a positive two charge or oxidation number. And then I end up with two particles of silver that are in the solid state. Now, just like we did in class today, we are going to make our lives a little bit easier. We are going to ignore the coefficients at this time. So this big two right here and this big two right here, we're going to ignore them for right now. So I went ahead and I assigned the oxidation state that was given to me for the silver on the left hand side. Since it's in its elemental or uncombined state, I went ahead and gave it a zero here. Now here's a little bit of a training wheel sort of situation. I have included a line on both sides of our equation and here's where we're going to write the electrons, but we have to figure out which side they belong on. So as I look through this half reaction for the silver, I see that it's getting more negative. So what that means is I need to add some electrons and I'm actually going to add them right here because a negative charge and a positive charge would give me a zero. So there is one electron with its negative charge. So now positive and negative cancel out to give us zero. And so we do not need this line over here at all. The next part of the half reaction that we're going to look at is the half reaction for copper. Since this is in its uncombined or elemental form, I have assigned it an oxidation number of zero. Through the reaction, it becomes copper ions that are plus two, so I wrote that down here. As I look from left to right, it looks to me like this copper is getting more positive. Because it's getting more positive, it must be losing electrons. And so the way that we will describe that is that they are being set free, and so they will become part of the product. And so the electrons or the negative charges need to go on this side, but I hope you can see this zero became a plus two. So it's not just one electron, it's two electrons. And so now positive two and two negative charges, you can treat this almost like an equal sign, and that adds up to zero. So that is how a half reaction for each one of these parts of the full reaction would be written. Now, since this one is getting more negative, we actually call this the reduction half reaction. And since this element here is getting more positive, we call this the oxidation half reaction. Let's see if I can move these boards without getting in a fight. Okay, now we're ready to look at something that's a little bit more complex. We have a compound here with three different elements involved, and through the reaction it breaks down a little bit, so we end up with two separate particles, one of which is still a compound, and one of which is oxygen in its uncombined or elemental form. So the first step, as always, is to add oxidation numbers all the way across. The potassium is in a compound, so its oxidation number is plus one here, 
It's also in a compound on this side, so that's a plus one here. My pal oxygen. Oxygen in a compound has one oxidation state that is possible. That is a negative two. Now, this oxygen over here is in its uncombined or elemental state, so it must be a zero. All right, now comes the little bit of math that we need to do related to our chlorine. Let's do this one first because it's a little bit easier. If this has a positive charge, and they must add up to zero because it's a compound, this must be a negative one. We do a little bit of math over here. There are three oxygens, and each of them carries a negative two charge. So that's negative six overall. Then we add one positive charge from the potassium. So we have five negative charges plus a chlorine equals zero. So that should tell you that this right there is a positive five. Next thing that you can do, transfer all of these to your half reaction skeletons that are down below. Okay, now just like before we're going to avoid, ignore the coefficients that are there, but there's also something else I want you to be mindful of. It was important for us to see that this was in a compound and it has a negative two oxidation state, but we don't need to really keep track of all three of them for right now. So if one oxygen has a negative two charge, that's what we're gonna focus on. I'm leaving the three off for now. Then you come over here. We did need to know that this was combined only with itself. So that's why the two was important at this time. Now that we have determined that it's elemental, the oxygen can just be left with its zero oxidation state. Now, when I look at my potassium through the reaction, it's still a positive one on both sides. So in fact, there is no change in the electrons for that element. So we can actually just avoid the whole thing. There is no half reaction for that. It is a spectator only. Okay. My next element, my chlorine, has a positive five charge. Through the reaction, it ends up being negative one. So there are a whole lot of electrons moving around here. We went from rather positive to now we're on the negative. So since we got more negative, that means that we gained electrons. So if I went all the way from positive five down through the number line, through the zero, all the way down to negative one, that means that there are certainly some electrons that are being gained, and in fact, there are six of them. Now, I don't need this end, so we can erase it, okay? I look at my oxygen. The oxygen goes from negative two through the reaction. It ends up being zero. So this one actually loses electrons, and so this is getting less negative, or another way you could say that it's more positive. And so that means, as we said, that electrons are being lost or are set free. And so the electrons actually belong on this side. And since we went from two negative charges to zero negative charges, it's two electrons. Since this one is gained and the electrons are on the left, this is our reduction half reaction. These electrons are being lost and so this is our oxidation half reaction. Okay, so just to debrief how we did this one, first things first, we ignored the coefficient, and then once we had assigned oxidation numbers, we actually left out the subscripts as well. Okay. I want you to take a moment, you can even pause the video. I would like you to copy these two half reaction skeletons into your notebook. This is gonna be half of your homework assignment. What I want you to do is to take a look at the elements that you begin with, look at how it changes through the reaction, and I would like you to put electrons on either one of 
these lines, but make sure you put them in the right place. I threw in a little bit of a tricky one here because I included some coefficients and some subscripts, but just take a look at how we did the last problem and you should be okay. Okay, this is the last thing that I'm going to ask you to do. Please copy these two problems into your notebooks. And then what I would like you to do is to break them down into half reactions. So there will be two half reactions for this one, and there will be two half reactions for this one. Let me know how you do, and we'll talk about it on Monday. Good luck.